through and from. Here they are. God is love. I wonder tonight, do you believe those three words tonight? God is love. Because mind you, so many would challenge them three words. People would ask me, listen, if God is love tonight, why does God allow so many bad things to happen in our world? I wonder if you ever asked yourself that question, dear. Isn't it funny at times we have no time for God, no thought for God, and yet when something happens, who's the first person we blame? It's God. Why do bad things happen, friends? Is it because God doesn't care? Is it because my text tonight isn't true? Why do so many bad things happen in our world today? Is it God's fault? Maybe that question has been in your mind lately. Where's God when terrible things happen? Well, my friend, listen, I ain't going to answer your question tonight why bad things happen. Why bad things happen has nothing to do with God. Way back in the book of Genesis, chapter number 3, God gave man a free choice. A free choice either to obey him or to disobey him. And in the Garden of Eden that day, you'll remember, man chose, man chose to disobey God. And do you know what the Bible teaches, friends? Why, what the Bible teaches? Romans chapter 5 and verse number 12 teaches us, as by one man sin came into the world, and death by sin. You know, friends, bad things happen in this world because of man's choice. And bad things happened in this world and do happen in this world as a result of sin tonight. Sin. Do you know what sin is? Sin tonight is the cancer of the soul. Everyone in this meeting tonight, man, woman, young or old, the Bible says we were born in sin and shapen in iniquity. And sin tonight is the cancer of this world. It's the root of the world's problem. But more personally tonight, sin is the root problem of your life, as it was my life. But even though these bad things happen in our world, friends, one great truth remains the same. God is love. And the great message of the gospel tonight is this. God is love tonight. And God loves each and every one in this meeting this evening. And it doesn't matter tonight who you are. It doesn't matter tonight what you've done. I can tell you this evening on the authority of God's Word, God loves you. You see, in 1 John chapter number 4 and verse 8, there you've got that great text, God is love. But in verse number 9, you've got, first of all, the proof of that text. The proof. You may say to me, George McConnell, how do I really know that God loves me? How can I be sure? Well, listen to what this verse says. It says in verse number 9, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world. Do you know something, dear friends, tonight? When you tell somebody you love them, you have to prove to that person that you love. You see, the world's love is a deceiving love tonight. The world only loves you when it needs you. 
The world only loves you tonight when, it, when it's looking something for you, from you. The world's love tonight. The world's love is a deceiving lo love. And let me tell you something else. Nothing has hurt more people than the world's love. Nobody has been pained more than the world's love. Nobody's heart has been broken more over the world's love. And many people this evening whose hearts have been broken over love, some wee lassie's heart broken too because that person didn't love them anymore, or, or some wee lad's heart broken too because that wee lassie didn't love them anymore. But you know, friend, here's the glorious message of the gospel tonight. God is love, and God loves you this evening. I remember one time hearing a wee story of a wee fella called Tommy he come home from Sunday school one day, and he sat on his granny's knee, and you know the way you grannies, there's nobody like your granny, you know. Uh, my granny was my, she was my saviour for many a time. She saved me from my mummy's wooden spoon. <laughs> and now, now my mummy, when our two were a wee mummy, she used to save our two from our wrath what she used to kill us over. But this wee lad, Tommy, sat in, sat in her, his granny's knee one day and said, the granny asked him, Tommy, what did you learn in Sunday school? She says, we learned a very unusual story, granny. Story, granny. He says, what was the story? About a man called Jesus, and he was God's son. Do you know what they did to him, granny? What, Tommy? Did you know wicked men took him and they nailed him to a cross? And do you know, Granny, it's the most foolish thing I've ever heard. Why, Tommy, what makes it foolish? She says, you know, did you know, Granny, the Lord Jesus had legions of angels to set him free? And he didn't do it, Granny. Wasn't he a queer fool? And Granny just took wee Tommy and gave him a wee Granny's cuddle and says, Tommy, do you know why the Lord Jesus didn't call those legions of angels to set him free? Because he could see you and he could see me. And because he loved you and because he loved me, that's why he didn't call them. You see, we Tommy turned around. You know what he said to her? He says, Granny, God is love, isn't he? God is love. You know, you've got to prove to people that you love them. You young fellas, when I was your age, I met a girl one night. And the first night I saw her, I was all dizzy. And I asked her out, and believe it or not, she turned me down. Could you imagine that? But remember, I got, I got her asked out again. I thought to myself, I better make a move quick for her. I don't make the move. Some other boy's going to move in there, and he's going to take her. And the second time, her eyes was open to beauty, and she said yes. <laughs> That's right. And we will tell you, I was only going for her for about a week. A week. Not a year, not a month, a week. And I thought to myself, this girl's going to be my wife. And I thought to myself, I better take her up talking to Chloe and let her see my mum and dad because it's, it's the done thing. And I took her up talking to Chloe, and she was never nothing to Chloe in her life. And I took her up talking to Chloe anyway, and I took her for a romantic walk around the main street. <laughs> you know, ham and ham business. And I took her for a real romantic walk. Do you know where I took her? I took her down the graveyard behind our church. <laughs> it's great scenery. Oh, do you see when you're behind the graveyard in our church, you're looking over the hills and the valleys of County Monaghan. And I walked her down the path. It's a steep path. And I remember pausing and stopping. And I said to her, do you see that wee greeny, grassy area over there? I do, she said. She said, that's our wee plot. And she says, uh, what, what do you mean that's 
That's your wee plot. Well, I says, well, whenever life's over, that's where, that's where our burying ground is. And says, why are you showing me that for? He says, well, when all of this is me, this is me dipping the water just to see what way it worked. So say, well, when life is over, when life's over for you and for me, how do you fancy laying with our ones? <laughs> she says, what do you mean? I says, well, whenever you die, like, do you fancy being buried in our plot? And she took me by the hands. Oh, she's very romantic, her, Tracy. Oh, very romantic. She looks up into my eyes and she says, George, you've lost the plot. <laughs> and then I remember, I remember the day when we went out to get engaged. Oh, fellas, I'm telling you, that's an embarrassing caper, getting engaged. You young fellas, if you've any notion of getting engaged, I'm telling you, make sure you plant your money away. We went out one day to get the ring, and she thought to herself, well, we'll go to Dunyan. And I says, no, no, there's too many people knows me in Dunyan. <laughs> we'll go to Lisburn. I went to Lisburn and uh, went to this wee jeweler's shop, you know, and I went up to the counter, first of all. It's a nerve-wracking experience. And I went up to the counter, and yes, what can I do for you? And I looked at her, and she looked up at me, and both of us burst out laughing. And we ran out of the jeweler's shop. <laughs> and she says to me, if you love me, you go back in there. I says, Tracy, I do love you, but not that much. We'll go, <laughs> we'll go, we'll go to the next week, Jewelers. But anyway, to cut the long story short, she saw the ring in the window. Three, three, D, row three. You never forget them things. And we went in, and do you know the way, do you know the way they bring you into this wee private corner, this wee place, and this velvet curtain that was like going into the holiest of holies. And, <laughs> and they sat Tracy down in the chair, and this tray of rings, and she was into it like a dive bomber, just like a pigeon. <laughs> and on to the finger, and put them all, all over the black background. No, oh, she says, oh, that's just my ring. Oh, yes, what are you thinking? And the wee jewelry man here saying, oh, it's lovely. Oh, it's just no other ring would suit her. She says, what do you think, George? He says, it's a beautiful ring, but mind you, there's a beautiful price stuck to it. <laughs> you know what she said to me? You know what he said to me? He says, if you really love that girl, if you really love her, you'll pay any price for that ring. Well, so I did. So I did. Never recovered from it since. <laughs> but let me tell you this tonight. How you prove you love someone is what you give them. But I want to prove to you tonight how much God loves you. For God gave everything. God gave His Son to be crucified to an old crooked cross. God allowed soldiers to drive nails through his hands and feet. And God allowed those men to mock him and to scorn him. And that's how much God loves you tonight, friends. Not one in this meeting can deny the fact that God is love because he gave his son to the cross. Tell me this, could you give your son for anybody? I have only one son myself, and I've only one young lassie, and I wouldn't give any of them up for any of But God gave his son up to that old look at cross. Because you see, sin is taking you to hell. And you're perishing tonight in your sin. But God doesn't want to see you perish. God wants to see you in heaven. But there's only one way to heaven, and only one price could be paid, and that's by giving a son to die on that old rugged cross. I'm sure we'll love that old hymn. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. T'was on that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. My dear friend tonight, God loves you so much that he gave his son to suffer, to bleed, and to die on that old rugged cross because there is no other way into heaven. Being good will never get you into heaven. Going to church will never get you into heaven. There's only one way into heaven tonight, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. I think it's about time we got back to the Bible. And the Bible teaches us tonight, neither is there salvation in any other. 
For there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. And tonight, if you're in this meeting and you're not saved, it's not religion you need. Religion does nobody any good. Religion makes people miserable. What you need is the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. The Lord Jesus is not a religion. The Lord Jesus is a reality. He's a reality. But you know, friend, tonight, here's the power of my text, because it goes on to say that we might live through him. You know, friend, that's the message tonight, that we might live through him. God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Do you know you're going to witness 15 people getting baptized tonight? 15 people. And each of these 15 people tonight are getting baptized not to get saved. Not to get saved. They're getting baptized tonight because they are saved. And they want to publicly identify before you tonight that they belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. They want to identify before you with his death, and they want to identify before you with his burial, and they want to identify before you tonight with his resurrection. They want to identify publicly tonight that they belong to the Lord Jesus. And each of these 15 people baptized tonight, they're going to heaven because each and every one of them had a soul-saving life-changing encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I tell you, friend, there's nothing like coming, there's nothing like knowing the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. There's nothing like it. People today are looking for life. You're looking for life tonight. You're looking for happiness tonight. You're looking for satisfaction tonight. I'm telling you, you'll find it nowhere apart from the Lord Jesus. I came to Jesus as I was, Weary, worn, and sad, I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. Almost, almost 32 years I have known him. Do you want to know something? I'm telling you, he satisfied. I thought, you see, I thought life was in a bottle. I wasn't an alcoholic or a drunkard. I went to discos and I went to dances and acted the idiot and was the idiot. Thought this was life. But do you know one night sitting in a pub? Not sitting in a church. Sitting in a pub. I didn't know it at the time, but God spoke to me. And I never felt as empty. And I never felt as depressed in my whole life. Until the night I came and put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I came to Jesus as I was, weary, worn, and sad. But I found in him like the 15 that's getting baptized. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. See, that's the power of this text tonight, that we might live through him. Tell me this tonight. Do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to know tonight all is well we are so? Sure not one of us in this meeting tonight knows when we're going to die. And you need to be ready. For the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. And I'll tell you nothing, none of us knows when the Lord Jesus is going to return. And if he was to return tonight, every born-again Christian is suddenly going to disappear from planet Earth and go into heaven, and you're going to be left behind. Never to be saved. And this is why, friend, the old, the old message still wrangles out tonight. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Then I want to talk about the peril of that text because you know what the Lord Jesus says? And I hope tonight this is not for anybody in this meeting tonight. The Lord Jesus says, but ye will not come that ye might have life. Friend, I hope that's not you tonight. I hope you will come because do you know the Lord Jesus Christ, what he said? He says, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundant. Let me tell you, there's life in the Lord Jesus tonight. There's abundant life. There's eternal life. And you can know that life tonight. You too can know that peace tonight. 
you too can know that assurance that you're going to heaven tonight if you would come to the Lord Jesus Christ and trust Him as your personal Savior. You may say to me, Jabba, George, hold on a minute. How do I come? How do I come to the Lord Jesus? Well, I'll tell you how you come. That's how you must come. You just come the way you are. And you know, friend, when you come the way you are, the Lord Jesus makes us promise, Him that cometh to me, I will in no ways cast out. The cross was for you, my friend. His blood was shed for your sins, my friend. Friend, don't let it stop there. I don't want you just to be my friend tonight. I want you to be my brother. And I want you to be my sister in the blessed Lord Jesus. Whom to know is to know life eternal. Will you come tonight? Make him yours and trust the Savior because he alone can, he alone must, he alone will save. For not one of us in this meeting, not one in this row here, and not one in this middle row, or not one over here, knows when we're going to die. And the most important thing you need to know is to know Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. And I trust you'll know him this evening. May God bless his word to our hearts this evening. And we're going to sing our closing.